Hi, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all of the viewers across the globe. First of all, before we get started, let me thank everyone for joining us for Binance Talks, Paying with Crypto. This is the fourth season of our new Binance Talks series. Every month, we'll be discussing one of blockchain's most pressing topics with some of the best experts in the industry. So we're excited to be back today, and we've got some great guests lined up for you. My name is Rachel Wolfson. I'm tonight's moderator. I'm a journalist at Cointelegraph, and I'm the host and founder of Web3 Deep Dive Podcast, a podcast that goes deep into Web3. It's brand new. If you haven't already done so, check it out. Um, joining us today are eight fantastic guest speakers for a conversation on reshaping the payments landscape with cryptocurrencies. So for this conversation, we have Igor Boki. He is the CEO of SettlePay. We have Damien Petro. He is the CEO and co-founder at Lizzie. And we have Irlap Hatipogu, CEO and co-founder at CityPay.io. And apologies, guys. I am very bad with pronunciation of some of the names. So apologies in advance if I'm not pronouncing your name correctly. Um, so the next panel, we're going to be discussing how we can overcome crypto challenges and blockchain barriers. So the guests for that panel will be Eric Barbier. He is the founder and CEO of AAA. Hackney Gluck, she is the regional head of business development at Binance. And Romain Colnet, innovation business development manager at Ngignico. So for our final discussion on leveraging blockchain's advantages and payments, we'll have Dmitry Verbovsky. He is the CEO at Yesum.app. And Athena Apostolo, she is the head of legal and compliance for APS Group at Advanced Payment Solutions Group. Um, so all of these guests will be on the show with us to share their opinions on the topics mentioned. We've got a great um, show lined up for everyone. So thanks again for joining us. Um, we also have a few giveaways that we're going to be doing throughout the show. So um, keep in mind the hashtag Binance Talks, because you're going to need this later for the giveaways. Um, let's take a look at this session's um, competitions. Okay, so in our first competition, we're giving away $100 of crypto to 10 lucky winners tuned into this session. Simply use the hashtag Binance Talks to tweet out your key learnings from the event. We'll pick 10 of our favorite tweets and threads to win $100 of crypto each, so get creative. We'll also be running a crypto box giveaway valued at $4,000 with a quiz from Binance Pay after our panels. For this one, please note that you'll need to be watching on Binance Live and logged into your Binance account to participate. Okay, hope you guys got that. Those are some exciting giveaways, so good luck there. Um, great, so let's take a look at the bigger crypto payments picture. That's why we're here today. That's what we're going to be discussing in addition to those giveaways. So obviously, we've come a long way from the first Bitcoin real-world purchase for two pizzas in 2010. Now there's not much you can't buy from retailers with BTC or a crypto powered card. Even payments giants used by millions of people daily are now embracing crypto solutions. So we've, we've come a long way, it's really exciting. In roughly 10 years, we've gone from simple peer to peer transfers to crypto powered cards, terminals and payment solutions. In fact, according to a Deloitte research survey, Nearly three quarters of U.S. consumer businesses plan to accept crypto payments by the end of 2023. 87% agree that this will even give them a competitive advantage. Developing countries also have rapidly harnessed the power of crypto payments. Peer-to-peer -peer options and mobile crypto payments have proved extremely popular in countries like Kenya and Nigeria. They've even leapfrogged traditional bank transfers and digital payment models as chain analysis research has shown us. But what can we expect looking into the next decade of crypto payments? And what are the biggest challenges that we need to overcome in order to gain mass mainstream adoption of crypto payments? So our fourth Binance Live episode will cover all of this and more 
as we guide you guys through the world of crypto payments. So let's briefly discuss the schedule for today's episode. To begin, we'll have our first discussion on reshaping the payments landscape with cryptocurrencies. After that, we'll dive into how we can overcome crypto challenges and blockchain barriers. For our final talk of the session, we'll look into the best ways we can leverage blockchain's advantages in payments. Finally, to round everything off, we'll have our crypto box giveaway and a short introduction to Binance Pay. So with all that covered, let's get started with the season. Okay, I'm just waiting for everyone to join us. We've got Igor, Damien, and Erlot. And if, it's it? very hard, right, Rachel? <laughs> okay. Yeah, if I'm mispronouncing your names, I'm so sorry. I apologize. Um, I'm very bad with with names. So, um, but so let's let's go ahead and actually, I'm going to have you guys just say your name and title, and then um, then we can continue there because I, I want you to actually say your names correctly. So. Uh, Damien, do you want to start? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Hi, Rachel. Uh, my name is Damien Paturo. So this is how you say it in French, actually. That's why. So we are Paris-based uh, solution, crypto payment solution. And I'm the CEO and the co-founder of it. So thank you. Cool. Igor? Yes, hello. My name is Igor and uh, I'm CEO of SettlePay. Mm, we are mm, payment service provider in, from Ukraine. And we have a lot of um, projects and uh, a lot of experience in payments in crypto and fiat to crypto, crypto to fiat. And we are partner of Binance and uh, do a lot of things in CS region and globally. Cool. And Irolop, and I'm probably mispronouncing your name. Erlap, you just want to give a brief introduction? Yeah, 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 of course. Sorry for that. I had a bit of lag uh, with the internet connection. So hi, everyone. Erlap Patikolo here from the Georgia CityPay IO CEO and the co-founder, uh, which we're dealing with the crypto payments in this region and happy to being here today. Great, wonderful. So before I go into the questions, I'll just give a, a brief introduction of this panel for our listeners. So. Obviously, cryptocurrency adoption has skyrocketed over the past decade. Um, we've already seen the difference that it can make, but where will this growing popularity take us? So in this conversation, our panel will discuss how blockchain will reshape the financial and payment landscape over the next 10 years. Okay, and so we've already introduced the panelists, so we will just get started. So my first question for you guys is, from your individual perspectives, how have you seen the payments landscape change over the past years? So whoever wants to kick us off with that question, feel free to start. Yeah, let me, let me start, um, if you don't mind. So um, I can say that from our experience and our um, background for the last five years, um, we just can see that uh, on the start of digital payments and uh, e wallets and uh, crypto payments, it was something like a mm, small uh, projects. It was small amounts. It was something like a um, no one believed in in future. But now um, I can see that um, the volume of traditional fiat payments, card payments, uh, that the process is something like. Uh, equal to crypto payments and crypto projects and we have uh, now we have a big team uh, who uh, they are involved in digital payments we started our b2c solution based on e-wallet and crypto payments also and we when we started with the binance pay for example in uh, ukraine and cs region it was something like a new um, unknown feature and um, merchants was um very uh, they um, they had a lot of questions and they no one uh, wanted to uh, to be the first uh, with this uh, product but now uh, we can see that uh, it's something like a, uh, one of the um, interested 
um, product and uh, we have a lot of uh, merchants who want to integrate it, who want to uh, start it with crypto payments. And uh, that's why um, I can say that uh, for last three, five years, um, it was something like a revolution in crypto payments. And uh, we have a lot of uh, users, uh, a lot of merchants who now they uh, know what is it and uh, they know how does it work and they like it and a lot of users just um, like it very much and it's uh, it uh, it is just start so um, i can see the flow and uh, numbers it will <coughs> it will go up and up so um, that's why i can say from our uh, experience uh, last three years um, it was something like a revolution digital mm. payments yeah but in in our in our perspective it was a pre pretty much the same experience so that's a so that's a good thing because you know we saw like all the uh, merchant behaviors really changing with the time you know uh, i would say uh, uh covid covid 19 crisis you know helps uh, you know global usage on the uh, broader payment level you know um it depends you know on which uh, side of the world you are though but uh, you know we saw that uh, in e paying in Asia today, you know, it's pretty uh, easy. You use QR code, you know, pretty much anywhere, you know. So uh, in Europe and uh, in the US, for example, it's still, you know, uh, accelerating on that, you know. So uh, we noticed, you know, like uh, since we are in the landscape since uh, 2019 uh, in Easy, you know, that um, at the very beginning, you know, when we were dealing with merchants, you know, we were like, um, I used to say that, but we, we, we we used to be like aliens, you know, when we are talking to them because, you know, they didn't really know what was that, how to deal with, uh, they didn't know how to handle volatility. Uh, they were pretty scared uh, regarding regulation, you know, and uh, all that part, you know, as you know, you know, regulation is pretty strong here in France. So we had to, you know, to create a product that is based on uh, usage, of course, the market. So merchants now really want to have crypto payment. Uh, we are in the vertical of uh, a brick and mortar business, so uh, we address more retailers and e-commerce, uh, uh, you know, brands actually. So um, we we really uh, saw a difference, you know, between 2019 and now. You know, um, we noticed that, for example, you know, in 2019, none of our merchants wanted to handle crypto in their ledger. Now. The, you know, some of them, you know, want to handle crypto directly, you know, uh, in the ledger. So um, behavior change. And uh, I think that's um, uh, that's why, you know, like a crypto, ma a crypto market is democratizing, you know. So uh, we are a, in a way of democratization payment and crypto payment uh, is pushing the pace on that. So, uh, yeah, um, things are going fast in our ecosystem. So that's a great thing. Yeah. So actually, uh, from our side, uh, like Damien said, there is an economic crisis and so many crises lead to this point. And this leading to this point is that from the 2018 to, to, to till today, we are very uh, we are seeing a very different reality of the crypto payments itself. So today we are discussing with merchants actually requiring the crypto payments from the company like us in order to integrate themselves. Uh, in the 2018 and the 19, like. Uh, other guys said we were pushing merchants trying to make them understand something in order to accept a kind of different currency. Uh, and for today, uh, actually, uh, we have big names, like, right, uh, as a client. For example, have you ever imagined Redis on getting paid in the crypto, right? Today, they are accepting crypto payments, Wendy's uh, or McDonald's in El Salvador. Everything is changing as a globally. Today, we are dealing with totally different reality. And with the adoption rate growth, I guess next generation mainstream payments, we will be discussing right away the crypto. Yeah. Can we also talk a little bit about the benefits of accepting crypto payments versus just like traditional payment methods? So uh, as, a, as a merchant perspective, um, as we can see now, you know, like payment is so strategic, you know. Uh, they all want to integrate payment and crypto payment is an um, as an omni-channel, you know, um, uh, uh, leverage, you know. So that's very important, you know, for the brands, you know, to integrate this new leverage. You know, crypto payment is one of the new leverage to catch, you know, like a new uh, clientele, you know, uh, new consumers, 
uh, new uh, people that will, you know, drive traffic to stores. So that's very important, you know, to be able to talk to those people, you know. That's why crypto payment is very important in the Web3 uh, landscape and ecosystem because, you know, um, those users got crypto, they want to spend it. Uh, and that's very important to give them, you know, solutions uh, as they can be in POS, for example, system, as they can be in the monetic. You will talk uh, just right after with uh, Angelico. Uh, so uh, it's a lot of different solutions and different ways to process crypto payments, but it's very strategic today, you know, for brands to handle, you know, those uh, new type of users and uh, consumers, you know. In every region, we are discussing different benefits of the crypto payments. For example, in Europe, we are not, not discussing the fee rates or the making the transactions, right? Because there's a SEPA, there's a different way of making the payments itself. But uh, for our region itself, fees are the biggest problems, right? Uh, for the payments itself, it's creating a huge problem for the merchant and whole of their payments or the international transactions going right away the fees. So at the end of the day, in order to integrate some kind of payment model, for example, for e-commerce or the local merchant, it is a taking huge time. Instead of taking and making a company structure, they are dealing with banks, they are dealing with different PSP providers, and at the end of the day, paying 3%, 4%, over 5 and 10%, sometimes depending on the business itself. So at, in here, crypto is playing a huge role. And for the benefit itself, for example, Georgian merchant selling some product to Europe. This merchant needs to wait at least three days for the SIF transfer comes into his bank account and needs to pay a huge fee for that. And at the end of the day, taking money is becoming so much complex. Uh, he doesn't want any more of that money because it doesn't cost anything to say. For the crypto payments, what we are doing? Second, right? It's in your bank account. It's on crypto account. Better you will have to, you will have the access of your funds right away. And um, I can uh, give some additional um, points um, for our region, for example, in Ukraine, um, accepting crypto payments uh, give a merchant a lot of new users. And um, even if uh, users uh, don't pay with crypto, but they um, can see that uh, this merchant accepts crypto, uh, it uh, does something like uh, positive effect effect and uh, increase loyalty of um, other users, other customers. And uh, now, the last research, uh, we can see that in Ukraine, the volume on, of uh, funds on, so um, it's um, up to uh, local currency is not stable and everyone want to have something like uh, funds in US dollars or crypto payments, stable coin. And uh, the amount of uh, funds, for example, on Binance wallets is uh, equal to uh, amount of um, Ukrainian hryvnia on cards uh, from or of a bank from the top three in Ukraine. So uh, starting um, with the crypto payments, merchants just uh, can get uh, like a three, five million new users and um from our experience we can see that uh user customer who um, paid by crypto once uh, they have a bigger uh, bigger check they have bigger uh, they increase payments they increase the volume of uh, monthly payments and uh, that's why um all of our merchants so we don't have any merchant who um, can say that uh, starting accepting crypto um, didn't change anything so they have positive effect they all have positive effect and they just that's why we have a long list of merchants who want to uh, onboard our solutions right I'm curious to know about the challenges though with merchants and consumers with consumers you know, using crypto for payments and with merchants accepting crypto for payments, because for me, just personally, if I was to use Bitcoin, for instance, as a payment method, my concern is is the whole tax situation. I mean, you spend a little bit of Bitcoin and you have to report that on your taxes, at least here in the United States. Um, so that's a concern. And then I'm wondering if merchants 
also have concerns. Mm -hmm. So can you guys maybe discuss mm -hmm. challenges? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. sure. Um, you know, regarding taxes, it depends uh, on which country you are based, actually, you know, because it's so different if you are in France, that if you are in US, that you are in Ukraine or in Georgia, I'm sure, you know, it's totally different if we are talking regarding that part, you know. But the main challenge for the, 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 the main challenge for us, you know, to address, you know, for example, merchants today is to have a fully regulated product. Regulation is so important, you know, uh, for huge retailers. And Rod, you talk about Radisson. You know, we have a, a very well-known brands that are uh, working with us today. The first thing they ask us is, was at least, uh, are you guys regulated and uh, how you work? You know, show me the flow because we need to understand how it works because we don't want to have Pablo Escobar tomorrow coming up to our brand and spend his crypto with no regulations. That's what they don't want at all. You know, that's the first part. The second part is the uh, asset volatility. You know, Rachel, you said, uh, when you pay in Bitcoin, they want to be guaranteed, you know, for the majority of the, 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 the merchant, they want to be 100% sure that when you spend 100 euros, for example, in Bitcoin to buy your favorite sneakers, uh, they're going to be paid at the end of the day, uh, the equivalent of 100 euros, for example, on the bank account, if they, if they want to, uh, you know, to have an offering services on that. So uh, What's important to them is to guarantee the turnover. That's very important. So volatility, uh, regulation, of course, and uh, the main, the most, I mean, the main, the main thing to me, and uh, we, we notice it with the retailer as well, is to have a plug and play solution. Um, um, let's say, you know, Erod, um, uh, you talk about PSPs, POS, and, you know, this is a big deal when you deal with big brands, you know, this is a very big issue, you know, they need to be able to aggregate, you know, all daily transactions, uh, they can be uh, credit card, they can be crypto, they can be checks, they can be whatever, you know, so that's a huge, huge, you know, like uh, work for, the, for, for those brands. So what we are doing, you know, is to, uh, we, we connect already, you know, um, those brands to uh, their POS system. So we are already plugged to 70,000 POS. So um, that's why, you know, it needs to be plug and play. You know, when a brand wants to uh, jump in, you know, crypto payment with Lizzie, for example, they just have to, you know, KYB, of course, we need to have a due diligence because we need to make sure that uh, everything is clear and clean, you know, uh, on our end and on their end as well. You know, we need to check everything. You know, once this is done, you know, since we are already plugged to uh, cashiers and POS, you know, the deployment is very easy. So that's very important for merchant perspective and regarding user perspective they want to have as well a plug and play solution so uh, igor talked uh, just previously previously about binance pay that's very easy for a user for example to connect his uh, binance account and pay with it you know it's a, a plug and play solution so that's very important and if we want globally democratized crypto you know with payment we need to build easy to play solutions that's very important with a, a, a ue ux flow uh, very understandable and uh, uh, that will give the opportunity to newbies to jump in the ecosystem. So that's the point, yeah. Totally agreeing with Damien in here. He already covered everything. And Sorry. to stop in here, I guess, it would be much more spending time, uh, regulations, uh, merchant easy integration, taxation itself, a different country in everywhere. So it depends. Yeah, I can add that, um, like Damien said, um, two, three years ago, when we come to a merchant to, to a new partner and to, uh, with an offer with, a, for example, Binance Pay, it was something like a, um, this year, so like a gangster or something illegal. So the first question was, uh, uh, what is it and to, is it legal or show us regulation uh, framework and to show us contracts and, and the flow? And uh, they um, wanted to start with the crypto payments, but uh, on the other side, they all of them um, was uh, all of them had concerns about uh, legal uh, payment flow and uh, what will the lawyer said. So we just now we. Um, we have broken this uh, wall and now they don't have these questions and it's much easier to sell the product when uh, you have um, 
you have a big amount of customers, merchants, they already understand everything about crypto payments. They, uh, when they try it on other merchants, so they come to us and say that, yes, I want the same. That's why it's, um, it's cool to, now is the time uh, when uh, they uh, have merchants, uh, have uh, no questions about uh, regulation, about payment flow, so they know everything about it. Right. We've got a few minutes left, so we're just going to start wrapping things up. So my final question is, what do each of you hope to see in the future for crypto payments in terms of innovation? Oh, hard question. I guess it needs to be discussed of uh, half an hour. Uh, for us, of course, from every company, we can discuss that uh, mainstream payments, uh, where we want to reach. Uh, we want to make possibility globally for every payer, every merchant uh, to make a reach on their everyday finances. And for us, crypto and blockchain is giving already the solution. We are just the infrastructures of itself in order to make merchants life easy. For us, future will be there and I'm hoping the best who are using the system. And if they have any problem, they can reach, I guess, any of the guys in here, Damien, Igor, us, and we can fix the problems for the merchants and the payers itself. Yeah, for, for, for us, the, the vision is pretty much the same. Um, uh, you know, the biggest challenge to me uh, will be regarding regulation. If we want to have a mainstream adoption regarding crypto payment, we are going to need to have a clear regulation frame and a global one, uh, ideally. Uh, that's uh, pushing strongly, actually, in Europe. So uh, um, I'm pretty confident on how it will uh, uh, end, at least uh, in Europe, with Mika. Uh, which is an opportunity uh, for uh, our company uh, at least that uh, at least european companies got a strong opportunity on that because we have a clear frame regarding regulations that, that's very important and in my opinion you know to make uh, the payment crypto payment at least uh, um, greater for tomorrow we are going we need to be able you know to embrace you know like uh, a non-custodial wallet with um, all those regulation parts and custodial wallet, you know, everything needs to be uh, one thing, you know, and this is uh, how we are going to push it mainstream, you know, uh, and at least very globally, you know. So uh, the biggest challenge to, in my opinion, at least, you know, uh, uh, in our opinion here uh, uh, will be based on that, yes. So how we do it, how we deal with uh, this regulation here in Europe and how we embrace, you know, all the, technological um, uh, wallets we already have or technological infrastructure we are all having at our disposal to make something, you know, the easiest way, the easiest for merchants and for users, you know, otherwise we won't have mainstream adoption on that. That's for sure. Yeah. Yes. Mm, from our side, um, I can say that we now uh, do a lot of projects to um, to start uh, for you, for customers, so for their understanding, to start um, with crypto, like uh, with uh, with crypto and fiat, like uh, one amount of money. So yesterday, uh, everyone uh, just had to decide uh, to pay by crypto, by fiat, and to, to what uh, a lot of steps I. Uh, shall do to convert crypto to fiat or to other side. Now we, uh, it was uh, two, um, two uh, streams in our um, development and we have uh, two um, teams from crypto payments for fiat. Now we have a lot of projects uh, with um, embedded finance with uh, connecting Binance Pay, Binance uh, accounts to uh, bank accounts to for bank we do integration with a crypto uh, merchants for on ramp of ramp solutions. So uh, the future is uh, is uh, um, landscape where the uh, customer don't uh, want don't have to uh, remember what balance uh, he has on Binance and what uh, what is his uh, bank card balance. He will just know that he have 
he has like a one thousand uh, dollars and go to uh, POS or something like to e-commerce and pay, and they don't want to to do this uh, steps to convert one to um, another. So we do something like a synergy solutions, and uh, I think that it's the future of crypto payments. So it will be like a um, only payments, not crypto fiat payments, just payments. Um, yeah. All. Definitely. Well, I can't wait to see the day where it's just all incorporated together. So you guys have been great. Thanks again for joining us. Uh, we've got to jump off and go to the next panel. So thanks again. And yeah, we'll see you next time. Thank you very much. Thank Bye you. Guys. Thank you, Rachel. Bye. 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 Thanks. Okay, we're transitioning over to our next panel. So Let's get the panelists up here. We're going to be discussing overcoming crypto challenges and blockchain barriers. So we're going to get the panelists up. Hey, guys, how's it going? Um, great. So before jumping into this panel, let me just give some background on what we're going to be discussing. So after discussing a brighter crypto payments future, we'll now move on to the challenges that we need to tackle in order to ensure this future. What are the main points we need to overcome for widespread adoption of crypto payments? Um, and how does this differ for businesses and consumers alike? So we're going to go ahead and introduce our panelists. I'm going to let you guys introduce yourselves. So Eric, if you could just kick us off and then we can um, continue with the other panelists. Yeah, uh, Eric, I'm the CEO and founder of AAA, which is Singapore headquarter. A crypto payment gateway with global presence in Europe and in the US. Great. Uh, Pak Ning, could you go next, please? Yeah, my name is Pak Ning. Uh, I'm taking care of the finance pay uh, business development team. Uh, nice to meet you guys. Great. And Romain? And so, uh, so I'm going to play the, the French guy once again. Sorry about that. So uh, my name is Romain. I'm in charge of uh, innovation business development at Ingenico, uh, Ingenico Labs, more specifically, so which is a world leader in the payment terminals. Great, wonderful. And again, apologies for mispronouncing anybody's names. Um, obviously, I don't mean to do that. Okay, great. So let's just start the panel off now. Um, so we've seen where the space for innovation is, but now let's take a look at the challenges that we face um, to overcome. So what challenges and barriers still need to be overcome for the widespread adoption of crypto payments? I guess that's kind of the first question that I'm going to ask you guys. And whoever wants to start, feel free. Yeah, sure. I think I can start first. Uh, so far from what we uh, what we heard uh, about, uh, retailers are generally afraid of accepting crypto payment because there is a uh, volatility risk. Uh, so just imagine uh, Bitcoin last year was uh, at, um, 50 something, 60, um, and then this year dropped a lot. So they are afraid of accepting such kind of um, uh, token will affect the cash flow. Um, but so far, um, actually, Binance Pay's technology is uh, we can convert whatever token customer is paying to the settlement token to our merchants or partners. So just for example, I can pay with um, Bitcoin. And then if the merchant uh, lists their price in terms of uh, USD stablecoin, then we can settle to them in stablecoin. So, so far this technology somehow uh, already solved the, the uh, one of the most uh, challenging part. Yeah, so yeah, this is one thing I observe from, from um, yeah, the industry. So I've got a few others, Eric. I don't know if you want to continue or a step uh, at the end. Go ahead. Uh, sure. Okay, so uh, obviously, when I heard like the previous panel, there's one thing that everybody's talking about, it's uh, regulation, clearly. So this, uh, I will not go once again on it, but uh, I mean, it's uh, an important step to, uh, to overcome. Um, I, I think as well, some uh, on several cryptos, the time of settlement is still an issue. So I know it's being tackled, but anyway, uh, needs to be improved. Um, 
then there's uh, something that is more political or philosophical. It's adoption by governments. And today it's very, it's still very unstable. Uh, we've seen what happened in the US lately. Uh, Europe seems to be uh, uh, having a sort of a direction, which is uh, seems to be the good one as well. But still, it's uh, it's not the case everywhere in the world. And if you want a wider adoption, you need it to have it everywhere. Uh, and then an adoption from consumers because the uh, UX, UI sometimes are not that easy. So uh, the more you improve, uh, the better it will be for this kind of adoption. And, uh, and uh, maybe one last point would be education. Uh, educate people uh, about crypto, which, uh, which is uh, still a big uh, step to, to, to take. So. Yeah, I, I would tend to agree. Uh, UI UX to me is the is still the thing where we really need to make uh, improvements, uh, whether it's from uh, the the custodial wallets or the centralized exchange apps. Um, and you know, it, it's still it's still very challenging for many users to be able to do a something seamless in terms of payment. Um, you mentioned regulation, uh, time of settlement. I, I think uh, this is going into the right direction. Regulation is pretty clear in more and more countries. Uh, you know, talking about AAA for a minute, you know, in Singapore, we have a, um, a clear regulation for merchant acquiring uh, and crypto. Uh, so, so we already have a pretty clear framework. Um, Mika in Europe is also pretty clear. Uh, obviously, the US is always a bit more complex because it's state by state. Um, but it feels like things are converging, especially thanks to the FATF, the, uh, this international body, uh, which uh, really starts to unify the different uh, jurisdiction. So I'm, 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 I'm getting less concerns on, on the regulation side. Um, and you also mentioned the time uh, for the transaction to happen. I think there are, uh, you know, technologies in, in our cases. I think we're, we're able to provide a, a, an answer to the, to the merchant in, in, in a couple of seconds. Um, so, so I think, in, in, you know, you, you're starting to have a decent um, response time. But key remains, regulate, uh, key remains UI UX. Yeah, Eric, I like that you brought AAA into the discussion because I want to know, uh, Packning and Romain, you know, the solutions that you guys are building, how those are overcoming the challenges that we've already discussed. So maybe you could go into some detail there. Yeah, sure. So for Binance Pay, it's actually uh, for UX, UI, it's very simple. So whenever someone wants to pay with Binance Pay, then uh, they will see a QR code this P, uh, this uh, uh, up appear on the website or they can just uh, press uh, a button on the mobile app and then it will redirect them to the Binance app. So they just need to uh, key in their password just like some other digital wallets, then the transaction will be done. And then also um, some other payment, some other crypto payment um, typically will need to wait for like one minute, two minutes for the confirmation time. But for Binance Pay, uh, actually, we don't need to. So as long as you key in your password, uh, the transaction will be complete uh, instantly. And there's no gas fee. So I think what we're building is quite like user-friendly. And yeah, I, I, I fully agree with Pak Ning. And you know, we're working with, with Binance Pay. And it's true that the uh, Binance users paying at our merchants tend to have a way better user experience than uh, people using other uh, wallets. Definitely. So on our side, we launched uh, uh, two pilots in France with Binance Pay. So uh, uh, in two, uh, two different stores, uh, store location in Paris. And... Um, our aims basically at uh, Engine Collab, what we tend to do is like some small steps, some quick wins to understand better the ecosphere, the ecosystem, etc. I know that we already work with uh, AAA and Eric uh, uh, in Singapore. But, and so in France, what we've done with uh, Binance is, uh, is basically uh, using the Binance Pay app on the consumer side and as well on the 
uh, on the merchant side, we are only the bridge. Our payment terminals are the, basically the QR code provider in store. And we, we also provide some sort of security because it's our job to, to, to ensure uh, merchants that when a client is coming to its store, he's going to get paid, which is a quite important part of uh, being a merchant, you can say. Uh, so uh, right now it's ongoing. So we'll see what happens uh, next. And yeah, if uh, we meet some success, then the idea is to, to provide it later on on uh, millions of our terminals. So. Right. Moving forward, what can we expect next from the solutions that you guys are building? Like what implementations will be set moving forward to just make this easier for everyone, if you can talk about that. Eric, do you want to kick us off there? <laughs> um, I, I think one of, the, one of the key feature which is missing in, in, in the crypto space uh, is a recurring payment uh, or, or one-click payment. And I think you know that should be the goal of the uh, of the industry is to have the kind of the same uh, user experience that what you can get on Amazon with a with a one click payment. And 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 I think that that's really for me uh, my goal uh, when I wake up every every day is to get to this level of um, of of a great user interface. Uh, because that's what people are are, are now expecting uh, as they're using the Apple Pay and uh, and this. So so really, the, the the goal is to have it as easy as you know using on on Amazon. So that, that that's for me the the key things we're working on. Well, Pacnig, do you want to go into some detail there on what we can expect next from Binance Pay? Yeah, sure. Uh, just now, Eric mentioned about recurring payments. So uh, we have this feature just up. So in the future, any merchants like, uh, for example, if you, you want to, uh, if, uh, if someone wants to subscribe a uh, uh, live stream uh, move, movie uh, app, then uh, they can probably... Um, also integrate with Binance Pay because we are now allowing the users to pay the uh, subscription fee uh, using Binance Pay. So this is uh, uh, we are on and on continue to uh, continue our effort to build something that uh, our users really want to. So, so on, on our side, basically, the main comparison is it should be as easy to pay uh, with crypto than to pay with a credit card, a payment card, or uh, uh, an Apple or a Google wallet. So this is the, the end target. For the merchant, it should be as easy as saying, I want to get my money in crypto or in fiat. Uh, that's it. Maybe uh, everything is already configured uh, and it's, uh, it's that easy for him. So even for concerning tax reconciliations, there are many subjects to, to tackle. This should be as easy as possible. And I, I would like as well for the crypto sphere more in general to bring, this is a program, cryptos basically are programmable uh, uh, ways of uh, exchanging uh, value basically. So the more you can bring some additional use cases around payments, so I'm meaning loyalty, whatever, uh, there are loads and loads of potential use cases, the more you're going to gain some traction and some adoption. So uh, community as well is, uh, if you can bring community as, uh, as easily as, uh, as uh, it is the case today, tomorrow in, in store, then it will be a big plus. There are many positive uh, sides that we would like to see more and more. Definitely, yeah. Community, education, it's all needed, and we're going to start seeing more adoption. So we actually are going to start to wrap things up here. We don't have any more time, but I just want to say thank you again, Eric, Pak, Ning, and Romain for your fantastic insights here. Um, so thanks again for joining us, and we will start transitioning over. Thanks, Rachel. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Um, yeah, also... Thanks, guys. Wonderful. So um, while we transition, I just want to let our viewers know that um, just as a reminder, we are running two giveaways today. So make sure to check out our Twitter for more details. Obviously, may the best tweets win. 
use that hashtag that I mentioned. And um, yeah, this is the QR code as well that can um, take you over to the Twitter giveaway. So I want all of you guys to participate. We've got some awesome giveaways. Okay, so without further ado, let's get started with our next panel. Um, let's get the panelists here. And while we get the panelists up, hey guys, I'm going to just hey. go ahead, hello and introduce um, what we're discussing. So this is our um, final panel for today's event. We're going to be taking a look at the best ways we can leverage blockchain's advantages and payments. So we've already seen the long list of advantages that blockchain can bring to the payment sector, but how else can we use this technology to make it quicker, cheaper, and faster payments and just more accessible to everyone overall? So the discussion that we're going to um, you know, partake in today will look at innovative ways that we can use cryptocurrencies to improve the global payments situation um, when it comes to crypto payments, what's attractive to vendors, what isn't. So without further ado, let's go ahead and introduce our panelists. We've got Dimitri here and Athena. So Dimitri, do you want to just go ahead and introduce yourself yeah. real quick? Yeah, sure. Hi, guys. Uh, my name is Dimitri. I'm from Latvia and I'm presenting the ESIM uh, company, which uh, um, provides uh, telecommunication services for the people around the globe. We provide the eSIM technology, which allows uh, travelers uh, to buy the, the, the virtual SIM card and use it uh, anywhere in the world with the um, pretty nice ro roaming prices. That, that was the idea. So about six eight months ago we signed uh we signed partnership with the binance so we started with the binance pay button in our application now we are implemented in the binance binance marketplace in their mini program so you can find us in a binance app just look at the marketplace and um, we see a huge um uh, interest from our users to use the crypto in this but the, the uh, we're going to discuss it later that the, the main the main the main problem for us is that uh most of the people um uh, see the crypto more like a trading uh, tool more than a, um, more than a, um, a instrument of 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 paying some for something Definitely. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. so we'll, we'll get more into that for yeah. sure. Obviously, I'm excited to discuss it. But Athena, if you could also just introduce yourself real quick, please. Hello, everyone. I'm Athena Postolu and I am the head of legal and compli compliance of Advanced Payment Solution Group. So we're a financial technologies group. We offer services for payments, processing services for Visa, MasterCard, uh, crypto processing, as well as alternative payment methods, including Binance Pay, of course. And uh, we also offer corporate payments as well as software development for financial institutions. Wonderful. Great. Thanks for those introductions. Before I get into the first question, I also just want to remind our audience to stay tuned because we're going to be wrapping up today's event with our $4,000 crypto box giveaway. Okay, so that's exciting. On that note, let's talk about uh, the questions here. So it can be hard to compete with traditional digital payment models. Bank transfers and online payments are fairly quick and easy. So let's talk about the blockchain's uh, advantages here and, and how you know that competes with traditional models. So whoever wants to start off, feel free. Yeah. Okay, I can start. I can I can tell you my story. So um, um, for the last six months, when we implemented the Binance Pay and uh, uh, set up uh, the application that they, in the marketplace, uh, we see a quite good growth of the uh, of the crypto payments in our application. So about about five to ten percent month-to-month -month payments are coming from crypto right now. Uh, as I um, 
as I said before, the 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 the, the main issue for us that uh, not much people know about that. So um, I I don't see any like uh, like a user uh, or partner of Binance. I don't see any problem of educating the people uh, using the crypto as a as a payment method. It's uh, it's more depends on uh, on such uh, companies like Binance to provide more information about um, the services you can get via crypto no, and more than uh, about talking about trading and futures and uh, all the other things they do. I believe so. So um, we see a, um, we, we see a, a big future together with the Binance. Uh, we see a we are growing together and uh, I hope uh, that uh, mm, with the help of uh, your conference as well, uh, more people will know that they can use their wallets uh, buying uh, necessary services in, in a Binance app as well. So, Got it. Um, Athena, do you want to also just discuss some of the advantages of blockchain technology when it comes to payments? I mean, so for instance, we can also talk about like transaction speeds, you know, just, mm -hmm. just any advantage that you want to mm -hmm. discuss. So generally speaking, blockchain uses decentralization and crypt cryptographic methods to make transactions secure and transparent. Okay. So in our business, we bring together the traditional payment method and in, in the blockchain infrastructure as one whole product. And this product can act as a bridge between different ways of processing uh, of both traditional fiat currencies and cryptocurrencies. So another advantage would be security and trust that the blockchain is creating towards the clients because there is a record keeping of all the transaction in the blockchain system. And in this way, we can keep track of important information, like who is involved, the currencies that have been used, any fees or exchange rates. And this decentralization approach, it reduces the chances of fraud or unauthorized accesses and it gives the user more trust and security based on our experience. Um, generally, our business focuses on providing brokerage and uh, payment processing services. So blockchain is very crucial. And uh, another advantage would be that blockchain enables us to make cross-border transactions faster and cheaper compared to the traditional methods. And by using blockchain, we eliminate uh, the need of the middleman, let's say. And we also allow people to send money directly to each other. And this makes global payments much faster and more affordable for people. Great. Dimitri, do you also want to talk a little bit about how blockchain is being leveraged in your project to, you know, um, to bring these advantages to the mainstream? Um, what I wanted to mention, um, the, the previous speaker um, told us about the, for example, for recurring um, um, pay, payments. And I would like to say big thanks to the Binance team. I know this already been done. Uh, I, I saw the API of that. So the recurring uh, payments are coming very soon, at least in our application. So they, they definitely know uh, the pains and the difficulties uh, they need to solve. So um, honestly, from my side, there is not much I can tell because we are quite satisfied with the service right now. The, the main thing is to get more people know about that. Right. Yeah. Education is key. I completely agree. Um, I also want to ask you guys, are we looking to disrupt or replace or perhaps integrate these solutions with traditional solutions that we see today? Like, what do you think? Do you think that everything should be blockchain based moving forward or will it be a combination. What are your thoughts on that? Athena, do you want to maybe kick us off? Of course. Uh, generally speaking, I would say that it is always good to make the most 
out of every product and out of every opportunity. So we do believe that blockchain has, as I said before, uh, a very competitive edge and it can provide the users and uh, both the companies who offer it as well as individual clients with this competitive edge. And I'm not sure whether or not the um, transition from the traditional financial industry from what we have it today can be completely converted into the blockchain forever but i'm sure that it can be done and it will be done in the next five to ten years based on how fast countries are adopting this dimitri do you have anything to add there um well, the, the, the blockchain, blockchain is a very unique technology, so uh, uh, it's, it's really more a question uh, to, the, um, to the government authorities, which uh, will allow the, 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 the new technologies come into our life. So it, it's more like, for me, it's more a legal question for like... Um, it's 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 here it's on the table so we we can start to use it it's just need to be uh, we need more trust or our governments need more trust to, to start using it definitely and as you mentioned before education is key and i think just you know educating regulators and governments and and consumers and merchants and everyone will definitely help bring adoption to this industry so that's definitely something that we need to keep in mind. Um, I also wanted to ask you guys, how do we demonstrate to vendors, for instance, the advantages and show them the benefits of blockchain technology? So I don't know with the projects that you're working on, if you guys are already taking a hands-on approach to demonstrate to vendors the benefits of blockchain, but if so, that'd be great to explain that. Uh, well, if talking about the Yesim, we're working with, we, we, we're not working with the vendors right now. Uh, we just uh, started with the Binance and uh, let's say it's uh, like a first steps we are testing this technology together. So we have the B2B department which will come later, maybe next year. And we, we definitely will try to put some things on the blockchain uh, so um, this is what I can tell you right now. <laughs> so on our side, uh, vendors or else called merchants, uh, we first and foremost go with the most competitive part, which is a cost-effective solution. <laughs> so we kind of have very nice presentations and videos which explain exactly the product and in this way they can understand in real time what it would be like and the experience of the user for generally the merchants or the vendors we explain to them that it creates a bridge between the fiat processing and the crypto processing and we explain them that the product is faster and more efficient and much more accurate based on the blockchain it is of course cost effective and it also enables global payments. And in this way, they can cater the needs of all the clients with international transactions. And the product is also more flexible and efficient and definitely more innovative than any traditional other system. Yeah, definitely. These are all key points. And I want to thank you both again for joining me today on the panel and for you know, sharing your insights with our listeners. This has been great. Um, we actually have to wrap this panel up. So thank you again, Athena and Dimitri, for taking us through this. Thank you. Um, obviously, this is an important topic. So thanks again, guys. So now the, ex the really exciting stuff. Um, obviously, this has all been exciting, but we are moving on to our Crypto Box giveaway on Binance Live. So after a presentation from Binance Pay, Binance's product marketing manager, Jalen Kua, will host the short quiz. And to take part, you'll need to be logged into your Binance account and tune into the show through Binance Live. So 
Let's welcome Packnick back to the screen and let her tell you a little bit more about what's going on and how you can win our crypto box prize. Thank you, Rachel. So it's me again. Uh, take a little bit time to introduce what is Binance Pay, uh, but definitely this is something that related to the crypto box giveaway. So pay attention to the presentation in just a few minutes. So I'm going to tell you what is Binance Pay. Uh, this is actually a digital wallet that um, within the Binance app, every Binance users can use it. So it allows you to choose um, uh, different tokens you want to transfer to your friends and family and also to pay for, for online transaction. So um, you're, within the wallet, you can manage uh, the, uh, manage the funds and uh, also use Binance Pay. You can also see the transaction history. And then um, Binance Pay also, um, we have two major benefits. One is, uh, for example, if I'm going to transfer you one Bitcoin, uh, then this transfer will be uh, without any gas fee. Uh, so no gas fee is number one benefit. And then second one is uh, the transfer will be instant. So typical for other uh, all blockchain payment, uh, if I want to transfer ETH to um, another uh, wallet. So typically I need to pay for gas fee. But uh, for Binance app, if I use Binance app to transfer, um, Binance pay to transfer. Um, so the, the uh, confirmation time um, will be uh, uh, instant. So instant payment and also low gas fee. And then uh, we also extend this feature for our users to pay with Binance Pay to do shopping online or uh, sometimes also can, can shop uh, at offline stores. So we develop the merchant solutions. Um, I will go through this one with a real example with you guys. Um, so this is in general how it works. It's just like some other digital wallet, uh, fiat wallet. Um, by scanning the QR code or clicking the button uh, pay, and then it will direct you to the payment page. So for example, if you are going to uh, sh uh, shop for a pair of shoes that cost you 213.9 USD, so actually you don't really need to hold BUSD. Uh, if you don't have BUSD, it doesn't matter. So you can just simply pay with um, the cryptocurrency you have inside your wallet. So for example, if I want to pay with ETH, then I can check the instant spot way of ETH. Um, so here is uh, how it works. So um, I can see 0 0.03, for example, 0 0.03 uh, ETH equivalent to this uh, 213.9 BUSD. Then for me, uh, how to confirm is I just simply key my password, then it will be done. Um, for now, Binance Pay, we support up to 70 plus cryptocurrencies. So it's very easy and convenient. Okay, um, so recently we enabled uh, Binance Pay um, uh, on one of our merchants' website. So it works like this. Um, so the, the benefit actually for the merchant is uh, number one, we charge a very low fee for the merchants. So, um, and then second is um, we can allow the merchants to uh, in touch with lady crypto audience. Uh, that means in the future, if any of the merchants they accept Binance Pay, they can be connected to um, our user base. We have millions of user base. And then sometimes we also run campaigns with our merchants. So this is another benefit. And then as I mentioned, um, um, during our um, panel discussion session, actually um, we allow the, uh, we support uh, different currencies. And then we also allow our merchants to be settled in stable coin, um, which is plot to one to one to USD. That means the cash flows are always um, guaranteed. So um, this is uh, something about Binance Pay. Uh, hope this is helpful for you guys to um, answer the questions later on. This is the end of my part. Thank you.
Thank you, Park Ning, for sharing some of the exciting use cases and functionalities of Binance Pay with us. Now we are on to our most highly anticipated segment of the program, Crypto Box Giveaway Quiz Time. I'm Jaylin, and I'm with the Binance Payments team, and I'll be your host for this quiz. So the quiz consists of five questions, each with four options to choose from. All the questions are based on today's topic of crypto payments and around Binance Pay. You can take part by making sure that you're locked in onto Binance Live. In the right side of the chat box, you will see the questions pop up. Answer each question with the corresponding number to the correct answer. Speed matters here, so make sure you're quick. Now, the $4,000 prize pool will be shared amongst the 40 fastest participants who answered four out of five questions correctly. So let's get started with the quiz and good luck, everyone. Okay, so the first question is, how much Bitcoin did Laszlo pay for his pizza in 2010? A, 100 Bitcoin, B, 1,000 Bitcoin, C, 10,000 Bitcoin, or D, 100,000 Bitcoin? You have 20 seconds to answer this question. So the correct answer is C, 10,000 Bitcoin. Okay, question two. Binance Pay lets you pay friends, family, and merchants with number one, fiat currency, number two, NFTs, number three, fungible crypto coins and tokens, number four, crypto loans. You have 20 seconds here. Okay, so the correct answer is three, fungible crypto coins and tokens. Now on to the next question. Sending crypto with Binance Pay has one, no fee, two, a 1% fee, three, a 2% fee, or four, a 3% fee. You have 14 seconds left. So the correct answer is one, no fee. Now onto the fourth question. Crypto payments are one, centralized. 2. Decentralized, 3. Reversible, or 4. Unsecure. You have 15 seconds left to answer the question. So the correct answer is to decentralize. Now onto the final question, question number five. How long does it take to receive payments with Binance Pay? One, instantly. Two, two minutes. Three, five minutes. Or four, one working day. Sorry, it's a bit laggy, but yeah, the correct answer is one instantly. So we have come to the end of the quiz segment. Thank you for participating. It's been a pleasure and I'll now hand it back to Rachel. 
Hey, everyone. That was exciting. So I just want to say thanks again to Pac, Neeg, and Jalen, and good luck to everyone that participated and took part in the quiz. Um, so yeah, that basically wraps everything up here for our fourth session of Binance Talks. So I'd just like to say a huge thank you to everyone who tuned in today for our fourth Binance Talks session. None of it would have been possible without the participations and guests and community to help build such a constructive discussion. Um, so until next time, I hope to see you all back here again. And thank you again to our speakers and to the Binance team. Again, my name is Rachel Wolfson. I'm a journalist with Cointelegraph and host of Web3 Deep Dive Podcast. Please follow me on Twitter to stay up to date with everything. And yeah, thanks again, Binance. Bye.